Greetings, calculator friends. Uh, this is uh, taking apart a 1920s Monroe mechanical calculator, part 14, episode 14. So uh, when last we left, um, I was trying to take apart the um, carriage mechanism. And we had loosened uh, this end of the um, of the um, smaller uh, digit wheel axle thing, I guess. Um, what are we going to call this? Well, um, so this is actually the totaling uh, mechanism, and this is sort of the item count mechanism that you use um, during multiplication and division. This actually displays the total. So let's just call this the total axle, OK? So anyway, um, so we had loosened this end. Um, but I couldn't get into the other end here um, because the center uh, axle was in the way. And so I determined that I needed to take the central axle out. Um, the central axle has um, this screw over here um, and a nut over here that I was having a little difficulty removing. I just got myself um, a thinner set of pliers and I was just able to uh, to reach inside there and turn the nut. So that worked out well. So now uh, let us continue. Um, I will hold the nut in place and then remove this holding thing. So what I did was I left the adjustment set screw in there. Um, I'm probably going to do that for the other ones as well. Um, there's, there's no real point in uh, removing the set screws once we've already measured one and determined what size it is should we choose to replace it. So this will go in bag 14, um, but before I do, because these two parts look the same, um, I'm going to measure them. So. So this was the one that I took off of um, this opposite end over here. And it measures in length 0 0.403. Um, its diameter over here on the outside is 0.565. So now I'm just going to look at this one. It's 0 0.417 and its diameter is 0.562. So basically they are the same. Um, and the set screw is going to be the same as well. All right, so I've removed the, um, I've removed that nut. So now the question is, can I remove the central axis? And it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to. Um, well. Yeah, boy, these, these parts must have been put into um, their locations in a very specific order. Because um, I thought I'd be able to get this out, but it doesn't look like, doesn't look like I am going to be able to. Nope, okay, let's see what else I can loosen. Uh, well, maybe I can loosen um, this end of the, um, of the uh, total axle as well, uh, and maybe lift it out as one unit. That's a possibility. So again, I'm going to take my really thin pliers and attempt to turn the nut. Turn the nut. It's uh, a little bit difficult, but I'm sure it can be done. Okay, that's difficult to do. Um, maybe I can loosen the screw on the side. No, 
Not really. Okay, so after fiddling around with this for a while, um, I've determined that um, maybe um, the middle part, the middle axle cannot actually be removed unless this, um, this uh, totaling uh, axle is actually removed. And the reason for that is that uh, this central support um, seems to totally prevent this middle um, section, this middle axle from being removed. So if I can't remove the middle axle, I absolutely have to remove this part. So what I did was I took the uh, really thin 9 16 inch uh, crescent wrench and I was able to reach in here and undo this nut over here which means that I can now remove this screw from the end oh, yeah it would help if I held on to the nut so I'll remove the screw from the end now. I have to push it out. Okay. All right, I'm pretty sure this uh, measure is the same as the others. Uh, yep, 0.395, which is pretty close and 0.560, which is also pretty close. It also has a set screw, so that goes in there. So, now I should be able to simply lift out, well, maybe not simply, but with some manipulation. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I can just lift this out, just like that. There we go. All right. So, I'm going to set the carriage aside. I can move the uh, focus out a little. Good. Okay, so here's the entire thing. Um, so we have, number one, a nut. And the uh, flat end of the nut faces uh, outwards like this. Um, and there's a, little bit of a, there's a little bit of a lip on the side that faces in towards here, towards this end of the axle. Uh, measuring, we can measure the thickness, and that's 0 0.158. Um, I suppose we can measure the inner diameter as well, um, 0.393 or so. So that can go in the bag. Um, what else can we loosen from this end? Nothing. So from the other end, we have also a nut. This appears to be just a, an ordinary nut. Um, that fits onto the screw. So this is 0.187 or so. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find that original screw in the bag, and I'm just going to screw the nut onto it so that I know that it's a pair. So the other thing is that there's this lock. Now, um, the lock has a sort of, um, all right, let's see, yeah, the lock has a sort of tab on it, and there's a, a sort of a cam that, that turns around inside, so it, so it can raise and lower this. And what this has the effect of doing is it sits on the axle, and it actually drops into a hole in the other axle, the other digit we, uh, axle and it prevents it from moving. So in that way, um, I guess the, the central wheel can control whether the axles can move or not. So I'm gonna put that in the bag. And now we can see that we have something attached with a taper pin, which is our nemesis, on one end. Um, on, the other hand, on the other end, we do eventually run into something that has a taper pin. So, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, and this end right over here, there's actually a clip that holds this part in. Um, I'm not going to bother taking this apart. 
Um, essentially, the way it works is that we have a whole bunch of digits. Um, these wheels are actually made out of plastic, um, and they were formed with the gear, the metal gear. Um, and there's a little spring between each digit that serves as a detente. So, um, and some of these wheels are extraordinarily hard to move. So I think that means that I really, really need to uh, clean this up really well. Because ideally you would want it to spin nicely, like this. Uh, but, see this one spins nicely, this one sort of spins nicely, this one barely spins at all. So obviously this needs to be cleaned uh, somehow. So I think I am going to be forced to remove uh, the parts that are on taper pins for this. So in order to prepare for that, I am going to remove this clip. So it's just a simple clip um, with just a little bit of force. All I have to do is take the small pliers and insert them on either side of the clip and then just sort of push out on it to get it out. the idea in any case. Let's see if I can actually do this. Surprisingly difficult. Like most things. Obviously, that's going to have to take a little bit of thought to get that out. So I'm just going to set that aside. So a quick update. Um, so I found um, that this part, which was sitting on here, um, was held in by this clip. Uh, and I did manage to remove the clip simply by prying at it, um, basically with this tool, the dental pick. Um, which is a useful thing. And uh, behind it, I found um, this really thin washer over here. So it's really, really thin. Um, and I'm, no, okay, sorry. That wasn't actually the washer. I picked out the wrong one. This is it. Yeah, here we go. This is a really, really thin washer. Um, it's almost almost like foil. Well, maybe not quite like foil, but it is um, point, uh, it looks like it's about point, on focus, focus. Why don't you focus? There we go. Uh, it is about point zero one two inches, um, which is pretty small. Um, but anyway, that was uh, sitting here, right over there, and then the clip was on top. So, um, that was that. Uh, the next part uh, is uh, this part, which uh, has a taper pin. As you can see, I was able to uh, tap the taper pin out after several iterations of heating uh, with a heat gun and spraying it with um, penetrating lubricant. Um, and I just tapped and tapped and it came out. So that's a, a good thing. So I'm going to remove that right now. Okay, so there is the taper pin. Why aren't you focusing? Okay, there we go, taper pin. Um, and now I can just remove this part. So, um, and we, again, we have to um, look at the orientation. Um, 
So if we look down along the shaft, if we look at the front part, we can see that there is this little cutout on the surface. Um, and on the other side, over here, there is a gear, but, focus, um, one part of the gear here actually meshes with um, a circle. So if we look down the shaft like that, um, we can look at the orientation and see that this notch is basically on the same side as that um, sort of surface. Um, so if I remove this, we'll be able to remember uh, which side is which. So that's really important. So let's just uh, pry this off. I may have to give it a gentle tap. Okay, so anyway, while I remove that, um, again, we'll have another jump cut and hopefully I'll be able to take off the next uh, part, which is taper pinned in, um, and that is this part, which has a taper pin. Um, none of the rest of the parts do um, until we hit the very end um, where there is a taper pin on focus where there is a taper pin over here holding the other side I probably will not need to remove that which is a good thing um, the fewer taper pins I have to remove the better there are pieces of styrofoam all throughout this thing um, and I'm wondering if some styrofoam didn't get into these bearings over here um, so wow this this one this one just does not move uh, so uh, it, it's a it's a really really um, crucial thing to get all of these parts out. So that's why I'm working so hard on removing this. Okay, so after the jump cut, um, hopefully that part will be off. So jump cut now, maybe. All right, so um, we're back after the break. And in fact, uh, it's been about four months. Uh, life got in the way. But uh, anyway, I'm back. Um, so when we last left, um, I was trying to get the taper pin out. Uh, you can see that I did indeed get the taper pin out, um, not without some unfortunate consequences. So um, before we get into that, um, basically these are the two parts that form uh, the digit wheel. Um, there is basically just a, a numeric wheel uh, on a gear um, and then there's a, a thing that sticks out here and a thing that sticks out here. One of them is to trigger the carry up to the next position and one of them is for the carry mechanism to flip it by one digit. Um, the other part here is basically just a spring-loaded detente and you can see that there are uh, 10 little divots in here so that when both parts fit on the shaft and the digit wheel rotates basically um, the, uh, the spring and um, little rod thing here act as a detente. So the, uh, the wheel has 10 distinct positions. So that's nice. What isn't so nice is what happens when I tried to, what happened when I tried to take the taper pin out. Um, so I had my heat gun and I sprayed some lubricant on uh, to this part. This is where the taper pin goes in. This is where the uh, this is where that is secured to. And I sprayed some lubricant, I heated it up, let it cool down, sprayed some more lubricant, heated it up, let it cool down. Uh, all of a sudden, um, the, this digit wheel that was actually next to it um, just sort of 
started smoking. And I was like, oh God, what's going on? Um, and it wouldn't stop smoking. I blew on it. And the whole thing basically just disintegrated into a piece of ash. It was like spontaneous. There was no stopping it. Um, I ran it underwater. Um, that didn't stop it. It just, it just turned into this black ash. So what happened? Well, this is actually made out of cellulose, um, which is the thing that uh, old movie films are made out of. And that has kind of a low um, spontaneous ignition temperature. Um, I think it's something like in the high 200s or low 300 Fahrenheit. Um, so uh, when the shaft got hot enough, the heat was transmitted to the wheel and the wheel just spontaneously turned into ash. So that's pretty bad. Um, but all is not lost because what I then did was I made a model and I 3D printed it. Um, this is um, the result that I got from Shapeways. Um, you can see hopefully the indentations of the numbers. Um, these are pretty much identical. Um, I even put five holes in here um, where these five rivets go. Um, and let's see. What I also have is, uh, let me just get a little piece of the rivet. Here's a, a piece of the rivet that I cut off um, that went into here. All right, so this is the gear without the wheel or the rivets. There's actually a piece of a rivet over here. There are spacers on each rivet. Um, because you can see that the wheel is held off of the gear by spacers. Um, and I measured these um, rivets. They're more like pins, but they basically act like rivets. Um, you stick them in the hole. And what I did was when I got this from Shapeways, um, I stuck this through the hole and it actually fit perfectly. And I couldn't believe it when that happened. Um, because usually with 3D printing, none of the measurements come out um, so exact. Um, and this seems to have been exact down to, you know, like one or two thou, um, which is very impressive. Um, the material that this was made out of is um, fine detail material. Um, I did make uh, other prints using their regular cheap uh, plastic, and that turned out really bad. It didn't, didn't look very good at all. Um, I painted this white. Um, I'm going to give it another coating um, so that, you know, hopefully it'll end up looking about the same. Um, and then I'm going to put some black um, acrylic paint inside. Um, so that is basically uh, the story of how, um, how I only ended up with one of these digits when I took off two. Um, Let's see. So the other thing is that there is one special rivet, um, this one, uh, which is the, uh, which is this one over here, um, and that is, I think, the carry up to the next digit. Uh, so in order to make the rivets, what I did was I took various samples of wire. This is aluminum wire. Um, and I just found different gauges of wire, and I got the gauge that was closest, uh, which is 16 gauge aluminum wire. This is actually copper wire, sorry. Um, copper wire that has been tinned. Um, it's 16 gauge, and it fits exactly in these holes. So this is a really, really good substitute. Um, now to make a, a sort of pseudo rivet out of this, basically, um, Basically, it's kind of a jewelry technique. Um, all you basically do is take the wire, stick it in the vise, and then take a, a small hammer uh, with either a flat or a round end. I don't think it really matters that much. Um, and you just gently tap the top of it, and um, that sort of makes the top um, a little flat. That means that you can put it in, and that's it. That's the end of it. So, so that's nice. Um, so I can make four of those. Um, 
I can put them through here, put the spacer on, put it through here, um, cut off the excess, and then, you know, um, with a hammer, secure it in place. That, that uh, will work for four of these rivets, but not this one. This one, um, it kind of looks like the rivet is sticking out, but it actually isn't. It's actually thicker. Um, and if I look at this closely, I can see that this has been turned on a lathe because there is kind of a tiny little um, central thing sticking out here. Um, and you typically get that when you turn things on the lathes. Actually, no, I take that back. I'm not even sure what that is. Because if that were from a lathe, they would have filed it down. Um, I'm not entirely certain that this is a cap that sits on the rivet. So anyway, what I did was I just measured it and I got on the lathe and I made a substitute out of uh, just, this was made out of quarter inch drill rod. And basically all I did was I went to the end of the drill rod and moved the cutter in um, and then move the cutter this way. So the cutter was actually flush with the end. Um, so I moved the cutter this way um, and then I measured it and then I readjusted until I got exactly the measurement that I needed. And then I just sort of cut in uh, and that made the first section. Um, the second section was just a matter of pulling the cutter out um, for the necessary um, distance and then cutting it over again. Um, and then finally, this pin at the end, um, I used a uh, um, I used a parting tool just to to go in there and uh, measure the distance, uh, and then I moved back out and used the parting tool to just cut the rest off. So, so that is basically this pin right here. So, so that's kind of cool. Uh, so that's, uh, that's really about it. Um, the next thing that uh, we're going to talk about um, on the next video is um, why some of these are working pretty well and why some of these are not at all working well. Um, this one, this one, it just seems to be greasy. Um, it turns. This one, this one doesn't turn at all. Um, and I'm, I have no idea why. I can look at the detente to see if that's maybe stuck. Um, this one turns really well. And this one, this one's a little sticky. It works well when you turn it one way, but not so well. It's a little notchy when you turn it the other way. Um, so each one of these wheels has something wrong with it, basically. Um, so I am going to uh, take all the wheels off, um, clean them, basically, uh, lubricate them, and I will examine the detente to see if there's anything wrong with that. Right? It should just it should just be able to push in, and it should come out just like that. Um, this obviously needs cleaning because it does get stuck. Um, so, cleaning, oiling. Um, and hopefully, when that's done, um, this will work. Uh, the big wheels, uh, do they have the same problem? Yeah, I think they do. Um, yeah. Some of them definitely do have the same problem. So um, once I take apart the small digit shaft, I will have to um, open this up and take out the large digit shaft, which is a little unfortunate because we've got more taper pins and you know how much I love taper pins. Um, this is going to be a problem because the digit wheel is right over here and I would have to apply heat over there. So one thing that I've been considering is using that freezing spray stuff um, to maybe freeze it and then maybe heat it up slightly, you know, not very much, and then freeze it again. Um, that might be an alternative. We'll see if that actually works. So anyway, I guess that's it um, for this um, 14th episode of Taking Apart the Calculator. Um, hopefully I will see you back 
on episode 15. Um, just a little bit of comment. Um, I have disabled comments on all of these videos on YouTube. Uh, the reason that I did that is that um, I used to have a channel with some videos um, and it was just such a pain trying to curate all the, co all the comments. You know, every so often you would get some jerk who would, you know, be a typical YouTube user and, you know, post stuff that basically comes out of the cesspool and then I'd have to go and delete it. Um, and it got to the point where I had so many videos and so many comments that were like that, that it just wasn't worth keeping up anymore. So, um, so this time around I decided to just disable comments altogether. That's a little bit of a shame because I can't get any feedback from you legitimate people who are looking at this. Um, so I'm going to have to figure something out about that. Um, in the meantime, if you really, really want to contact me about something, um, you can contact me at robert.c.baruch, that's B-A-R-U-C-H, at google.com. Um, and hey, Google's got uh, spam protection, so you know if I get spam or crazy emails, I can just uh, teach Gmail how to uh, avoid those in the future. So again, if you have a comment, um, please email it to me. Um, I will see if I can address it in the uh, video afterwards, um, kind of like a viewer mail section. So again, that's robert.c.baruch, B-A-R-U-C-H, at gmail.com. Did I say at google.com? I did. I work for Google, so I have a different address for Google. Um, so that's at gmail.com. Sorry about that. Um, so until next time, I'm Rob. Uh, see ya.